Bali, Indonesia. A lush, green paradise with a deep, rich culture and a vivid, humid climate. It's a tourist destination for many, and a place 4.2 million people call home. It's black sand beaches sprinkled with glitter, it's white sand beaches soft to the touch. Swaying rice fields cover a large portion of the island, but beyond this pristine image, there is another issue at hand. Plastic. A revolutionary material that has shaped the way we've lived since its creation in 1907. Durable, flexible, moldable, inexpensive, it has many perks. It's hard to imagine a world without plastic. It's embedded into so many of our modern day, everyday objects. But too much of a good thing can also be a bad thing. We've created so much plastic over the years, most of which is still around in some shape or form. And we're having trouble figuring out just how to deal with it all. Every year, we are producing around 300 million tons of plastic. And with our wasteful habits, and in most cases, a lack of proper infrastructure, more than 8 million tons of that plastic is dumped into our oceans every year. A lot of the time, it's making its way into the food chain and onto our plates. It's a problem that we now share with Bali, Indonesia, a place you wouldn't expect to be having a battle with pollution. Before plastic was introduced, plates and packagings were made of natural materials and would be thrown in the river when they were no longer needed. They would biodegrade, leaving no sign they were ever there. But when plastic was introduced to the island, it was treated just the same, being burned or thrown, affecting local health, clogging up waterways, threatening tourism, and harming ecosystems. And although the infrastructure here is incomplete, there are still people working towards creating a cleaner island. I took a drive down to Denpasar to meet up with Trash Hero Kurtalamu, a local Trash Hero chapter. Trash Hero is an organization that focuses on waste management and education with local communities all around the world and works for sustainable solutions that help to create change. I went and visited a local cleanup they hold at this beach every Sunday. I first got to know Putu Evi, the leader of this Trash Hero chapter, and a passionate Balinese dancer and instructor, and then her husband, Van Hatch, who teaches Gamala. This is the not worst day for us. <laughs> when it works, it's like cover everything. The shocking one, when we went to the Kadonganan, the fish market, like you get this thick oh. of plastic, and it just make you shock and almost cry and everything. Since we were here, I think the amount that stay here is not as much and also because the movement around Bali is quite massive. And we, we find a lot of straw of course and then the plastic cup, that's why we try to approach the uh, company, like bigger companies, to talk to them and say we will stop producing that now. So I'll come and end with the... Uh, She introduced me to the group. Some were local to Bali, some were from different parts of Indonesia, and others were from international countries. But despite their differences, they all share a similar mission, while keeping the island clean and spreading positivity along the way. We don't say anything, no words, no pointing out, because that's not our style as a treasurer. As a treasurer, we try to be positive, so we always try to smile. While the beach cleanups themselves are not the only solution, they help to raise awareness and to keep the villages and public spaces clean and healthy, even if just for a short while. Trash Hero means like we get as many people aware. We have motto, we clean, we educate, we change. By doing our cleanup weekly, we're hoping that to educate people and then eventually they change themselves. They don't need to come to, to do the cleanup, but when they come, they learn something. So that's the education part. After the cleanup, they sorted the collected waste. Although much of this waste will end up in the landfill, they do their best to recycle as much as they can. Not all of the trash that we got can be recycled here because of the condition. You know, it's been a long time on the, on the beach. It's been a long time probably on the sea, so it's not in a good shape. This is something that he can actually recycle. So this is has values. All that trash that we got, the residue still go, but not all the residue. And also, it's not anymore on the beach. That's the whole point. It's important to be here. Ironically, though, 
Right in front of the action, down on the beach, someone decided to bury a diaper in the sand, with the assistance from his daughter to pat it down. We alerted the group. Then, Puto Evi made an effort to help educate him on the dangers of burying waste. Yeah, he said sorry straight away, so uh, it's a good start. <laughs> but did he have any other choice not to bury it? What other choices does he have? He, he has a lot of options. 30 trash cans on the beach here, one there, one there. There's a trash pickup here. It'll come every three or four days. You could buy cloth diapers here. There's actually a tradition of using cloth diapers. We started off uh, setting up this community because of the trash burning problem here. And then the more we got into it, we realized, oh, the reason why people burn trash is because the trash wasn't picked up regularly enough. Uh, people don't separate their trash. People are not close to their trash. They don't know how to reduce their trash. Behind that, there was a problem with waste management. So it's still a massive problem in Indonesia. It's still unresolved. So the children who were born in Indonesia after about the year 2000, the new norm for them is dirty beaches, dirty temples, dirty rivers, plastic in the rice fields. And their new norm now, as of about 2015 onwards, is, is eating plastic, so consuming plastic and fish, uh, salt, uh, water, and 80% of fish that were fished here had plastic in their organs. And this isn't just a problem unique to Bali. According to a report by Fredonia, the State University of New York, 93% of all bottled water brands tested showed signs of microplastic contamination. And a study published by the Journal of Science and Technology, conducted by a team from Incheon National University and Greenpeace East Asia, sampled 39 different brands of salt harvested in 21 countries and found microplastics in 90% of the packaged food grade salt. Eventually the government became so overwhelmed that they decided that the best way to handle it is for the village to take care of their own trash in their own village. Villagers weren't given the tools of how to do it. And so now we're pushing the government uh, to give them the tools to be educated about how to reduce their impact in the environment. Afterwards, Vaughn and Evie invited me to their home in Gamelon Dance Studio to see how they recycle and what they do to limit their waste. I was excited to see they had an electric motorbike car, which you don't see much around the island. This is three months worth of household trash from the recycling bins. Here, they show me how they separate their trash. First, they explain what they do with food waste. So we collect a, a, a shell like this, we uh, dry it up and then we make it into like a powder. So we put it in our uh, aerob uh, compost bin at the front. The little guys giving them lunch. Oh, it's so cute! Some worms. <laughs> Try wet. Uh, we learned partly online, but also uh, we bought a very cheap book. This is our big, bigger one, and we have one at the back of the kitchen. This is the liquid compost. You pull this out, it's going to go around. That's that's quite smelly. We can measure it into a recycled bottle. Gonna smell. Oh, it smells bad. Gonna smell. You got it. Okay. <laughs> Here's what they put in the thin plastic bin. With dental floss. I'm not sure whether it can be recycled as thin plastic. Brown paper. Um, you can see it's got the plastic lining. Still, people don't know here that this is. Are very very bad for the environment because the recyclers I'd imagine they won't because a lot of it gets wet they won't take this off and now I can actually recycle this guy. This is what's in the thick plastic bin. The nasal spray. We've used bamboo toothbrushes now we don't use this anymore this would have been used for cleaning something. And some unknown things. They then take me into the kitchen to show me their journey and process in limiting their household waste. They showed me a beeswax cloth which they use to cover their food instead of cling wrap. Very useful. Uh, when you finish, you just wash it with soap and let it dry and then ready to use again. We stopped using tea bags, now we use uh, this for loose leaf tea. We didn't know until about a year ago that most tea bags have plastic lining on them to be able to retain the heat. They've convinced the local school to have no single-use bottles or cups and are donating a water filter. In Indonesia, we haven't got the laser system yet, like I saw in Switzerland. We're still getting the stickers, so this is residue. We don't like that. It's still better than having it wrapped in a plastic plastic bags. If we forget our those bags for the fruit or vegetables, we just put it straight into our grocery bags, which are cloth bags. So you can see we're not free of plastic. We try to get as much bottles as possible. We haven't found a solution for our cheese, New Zealand butter also. Anchor, please try and find a solution for this. He then showed me his safety razor, which has one blade. After one time I could use it, use it this morning, didn't cut myself. Putu Evi then shows me a few wonderful eco-crafting projects she's been working on. So there's like a volunteers of ours that who actually uh, made this bag made out of a uh, drink sachet. When we learn about how to make bags, I'm think I was thinking like I think I can make a costume out of this. We made this nice uh, headdress. This one is made out of a plastic bag that you iron. 
Korean. This is supposed to be a legong dance costume. So you wear a nicer clothing, like with gold painting or something, or maybe dark in color, so it stands out. So from one coffee sachet, I get like four or five or six sometimes of pattern. This one is the cappuccino, the sea. The theme is the ocean. Yeah. So this one looks like a seaweed, yeah. right? <laughs> you put your passion into that, like me as a dancer, I create and that's costume. So you've got to change within yourself as well, step by step, but you've got to ch change and you've got to make that change. We're all in it together. The change start within yourself, the change start in your home. Do a plastic diet kind of thing and then you just start slowly. Say like, you know, just like any type of diet. It's actually good for your health, it's, it's good for the economy, <laughs> and it's make you creative too. I said goodbye, thanked them for the opportunity, and headed on my way, leaving with a new knowledge and hope for the future. Seeing their journey to zero waste inspired me to take my journey more seriously too. There are so many options when it comes to living zero waste here in Bali. First of all, there is Zero Waste Bali, a bulk store without plastic packaging. There are two on the island, one in Krobokan and one in Ubud. This is footage from the opening of the store in Ubud. If not Zero Waste Bali, there are many local markets where you can bring your own reusable bag, as long as you are willing to say no to plastic bags. And then there's Refill My Bottle. Because tap water is often not drinkable in most Asian countries, a lot of the time, you need to buy bottled water out of necessity, and it feels like a hit in the face when you're trying to reduce your single-use plastic. And that's why I love this idea. It's a community project that has created refill stations with clean, drinkable water, and has an app that can show you the nearest refill stations around the island and across Asia, where you can refill your reusable bottle without having to buy another plastic bottle at the store. I asked some questions to the project manager, Christine, and her assistant, Margot Jacques, with some no-bake cookies in hand. It started as a community project, and it still is, brought by the Be Greener community. She told me that Be Greener is a community of sustainable business owners across Indonesia, and every month they band together and talk about permaculture, zero waste, and similar topics. And at one point they come up with the idea about, hey, why don't we make refills available at all of our properties? We work together with similar organizations and how we can integrate our um, work together. We now have about more than 900 refill stations all across Southeast Asia. We provide stickers like this to all refill stations and they can actually display this uh, droplet sticker in front of their um, entrance door. And you can download the app, we also provide the QR code here. I then asked, how do we keep Bali clean? The awareness and uh, infrastructures. I think we really need to educate the people also to let them know that uh, burning waste it will create toxic fumes. I wondered, what gives them hope in face of the pollution? Today, a lot of younger generations and a lot of the local people here in Bali and everywhere else in the world, they are becoming more aware about the environmental problems. Well, last Saturday, we went to a sustainability meetup and we could see that the, the, the little children, they were already aware of uh, plastic and that when you use plastic, it ends up in, in the ocean, that is not good and why. Yeah, I think awareness is, uh, is increasing little by little. There are so many people out there who are very keen to uh, save the environment and they do actually take real and concrete actions. And I think that gives me hope that at one point we can all come up with a solution that can be uh, implemented everywhere and also we can all work together and join forces to keep our environment clean. I asked Christine, how does one become a refill station? And she said, all you need to do is complete the online registration form on the website. And she said that everything is free for the businesses who register as refill stations, but some stations do charge a small fee for the refill, so they can afford to buy another gallon of water. I asked Margot, what are some challenges one might face when starting a project like this? First, she said to make people aware of the concept, because often people don't know a solution to single-use plastic exists. Then she told me another challenge. We don't have money, yeah. that's the problem, so we have to raise funds. And we use a crowdfunding campaign. That was the first one to create the app that was really successful. And now we need money to, um, to cover the operational costs. I then asked them, what are the main actions today that they think are making the biggest impact on the future. I think uh, actions uh, within schools, so infrastructures <laughs> and cleanups. You can already reduce the number of single-use plastic bags. And you can see in Bali there are a lot of initiatives against plastic, against waste, so yeah, I think we can have a hope about this.
<laughs> Maybe just visit our website at refillmybottle.com and they have all the information there and if you have any questions and if you would like to get in touch with us you can uh, either message us on Facebook, Instagram or email us to I love to at refillmybottle.com oh, Thank you so much! Thank you! What a nice project! I'm definitely going to use this service when I need to refill my bottle when I go out too. But I feel like there's a question in my mind that remains unanswered. What kind of infrastructure is currently in place? With the trash that one does produce, where can it go? Sometimes it's just thrown on the ground, sometimes it goes to the landfill, and other times it goes to local recycling centers, and sometimes it goes to EcoBali, a local sorting center. EcoBali is a company that started in 2006 with the means to achieve zero waste. They offer pickup service and waste separation, in which after they send to a recycling facility in Java. They also handle education for local schools around the area. This is their sorting center. Every day, they bring in one ton of non-organic waste. I interviewed Ketut Mertadi, the director of EcoBali. He told me that their system is divided into two parts, one for paper and one for plastic, glass, and metal. And we separate it manually. 80% of the waste they collect is recyclable. The other 20% comprises of residue. I asked him what kind of challenges you might face when starting a sorting center. He says a challenge from their side is finding people who want to work in the industry because it is often seen as dirty and is a low-paying profession. Many categories, so that's why it's a lot of work, actually. It's not easy to find people to do that. Another challenge is finding people who are willing to pay for waste management for it to be handled properly. I asked him how do we keep Bali clean and he said first is awareness and education, second is infrastructure, to the rubbish bin, then collection, and finally to the recycling factories. He said it's necessary for many organizations to be working together, not just one. They make drinking glasses out of old bottles and reusable bags out of nets. And it has four bags inside for grocery shopping. And it looks like it's also good for what? Clothing or yeah, yeah, I mean, it looks like a tank top, right? <laughs> so, in case you don't have anything to wear on Saturday night, just rip this like a DQ out of the car and wear it. Everywhere I go, I am reminded of important forgotten things. With Trash Hero, and the others as well, I witness the power of collaboration and teamwork. And with EcoBali, I am reminded of the importance of good infrastructure that keeps our society running smoothly. With Refill My Bottle, I saw how one small idea can turn into something much bigger. And I gained a sense of hope, for Bali and for the world. Because as long as there are people who are as passionate, as positive, and as active as the wonderful people I've met, I don't think they'll allow anything to stay wrong. We are like, know that we go feel, feeling down. We know that there's always other people who can make us smile. We know that we're not alone doing all this. Plastic journey in the sea I know one day you'll come back to me Through the tides and winds and fishes I know you'll come back, I know you'll come back to me Plastic journey, ooh Plastic journey, ooh Plastic journey, ooh